Hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be um, with you this afternoon and to share a few few information about hydrogen large scale electrolyzers. First of all, I would like to say that um, to state that we're on booth E73. So uh, feel free to come and visit and ask any questions or if you've got projects or any uh, any info that you'd like to share with us, you'll be most welcome. First of all, a brief presentation of our group. Our group is uh, about 200, 200 years uh, old. It's based on the five sectors, defense, energy, industry, services, and environment. It's about 1.5 billion turnover, and uh, it's a private group with large activities regarding hydrogen on energy, more generally speaking. We are in um, uh, large boilers as well as solar, energy storage and hydrogen. We are a large actor and uh, big uh, solar thermal power plants. Here you see a unit uh, built in South Africa. We're also very much involved in the maintenance of wind turbines with large contracts in the North Sea. We are also an actor in energy storage with electric batteries, whether it's uh, young lithium or uh, flux batteries. And last but not least, hydrogen solutions. Regarding hydrogen solutions, we are present all the way from electric generation, generally speaking 12 to 15 kilovolts, all the way to hydrogen distribution. This involves hydrogen production, compression, storage, and distribution, and we have since I mentioned, we've got a battery uh, a business and we have the capability to leverage the uh, current coming from renewable energies and also to make sure that our electrolyzers work in the largest possible range. So that's a large topic to make sure that the hydrogen production is as stable and as smooth as possible. Here you can see the growth of capacity of renewable energies in, in the world between now and 2040. And you see that Asia is by, by, by far the largest provider of this increase. Europe comes second, but it's uh, four times less than the boost in Asia. America could be in, in third position. As a result, it was very important for CMI to be present in, of course, different parts of the world, but mainly in two very hot spots, which, are, which is Asia on one side and Europe on the other side. To that effect, we have uh, made uh, a large collaboration with our Chinese colleagues of uh, Suju Jingli, with whom we have now a common joint venture, having the other offices both in Belgium and France. In addition, of course, we benefit from the large CMI network. So far, the largest user of hydrogen in the world is the industry sector with uh, refineries, with the uh, iron and steel sector, with the glass sector, with the uh, chemical sector, for example, fertilizers. This amounts for a total production of 68 billion tons a year. 
out of this production, about 96% is coming from fossil energies. And when we know that one ton of hydrogen produces 10 to 12 tons of CO2, you see that we've got a, a big challenge in front of us. So let's get really deep into the, uh, into the subject of uh, large-scale electrolyzers. We see that uh, when you talk about refineries, you can see that an average refinery capacity is 10.4 uh, million tons of oil per year. That requires an electrolyzer of 340 kilowatts, megawatts, sorry. For Europe, that would represent 24 gigawatts of, of hydrogen to be used. In the world, 142. For a steel making plant, it takes about 3 megawatts an hour of electrolysis to produce one ton of steel. The average production of a plant of, let's say, 4 megatons per year is equivalent to 1.2 gigawatts of uh, electrolysis. European production, 51 gigawatt. Global steel production, 515 uh, gigawatt. An ammonia plant, same order of magnitude. An average plant of 100,000 tons per year requires 144 tons of hydrogen. For this, you need roughly a 1 gigawatt electrolyzer. For Europe, represents 25 gigawatts. And around the world, that would be roughly uh, a capacity of 225 and 250 gigawatts. So you can see where I'm going to at present, that it's not with the current sizes that we can meet those challenges. If we go back to a steel plant with a 1.2 gigawatt electrolyzer plant that I just mentioned, if you would go with the current uh, stack sizes, you would require football fields. And obviously, that wouldn't be good in terms of capex and opex. Even with the largest electrolyzer in the world uh, that we are currently producing, with a 7.5 megawatt, that would mean a hydrogen plant of 160 stacks, which obviously would be a very large number. And I remind you, this is the largest single stack electrolyzer in the world. So there's definitely a need to upscale the single stack size to 10 plus uh, megawatts to be able to answer the market needs and also to have the required capex and opex that everybody is looking after and that will make hydrogen, green hydrogen uh, competitive compared to fossil hydrogen. And you can see that the uh, scaling up is very, very, very fast. In 1992, our uh, Chinese friends in uh, Suzhou Jingli uh, started with a 60 nobo cubic meter an hour. Um, that was the, the research on the electrolyzers. And you can see the curve, how quickly this sharpens, and it's pretty much exponential. Last year, we commissioned uh, two 1,000 cubic meter an hour electrolysis. And uh, this year, we just sold a 15 uh, cubic meter an hour uh, uh, electrolyzer. Next year, a, a 2,000 uh, a, a cubic uh, meter an hour electrolyzer will be available and we are already working on the 20 uh, megawatt solution. I was mentioning that we uh, just sold the largest single stack electrolyzer in the world, 7.5 megawatts, supplying 1,500 uh, cubic uh, meter an hour uh, hydrogen. 
this electrolyzer will be installed uh, for the Winter Olympic Games in, uh, in China in uh, 2022. So it's uh, in addition to breaking a world record, it's also a big pride uh, for the company. Basically, if I summarize the key points of a large-scale electrolyzer solution, uh, first of all, you uh, decrease the number of installed units. So, of course, less trouble, less maintenance, and less capex. It's a much lower footprint than uh, what we have at present. And in many, many places, uh, the square meters is an important factor. It's also uh, having a lower uh, footprint means easier maintenance, friendly operation maintenance, and of course, much faster installation and commissioning. I would like to present you something which is still part of the future, but probably not for long, uh, a one gigawatt hydrogen plant and which will be able to meet the challenges of our times uh, when you look at the uh, productions that are required for a number of installations, whether it's steel making, whether it's chemical plants, uh, any kind of, uh, of a large uh, consumer of hydrogen. So here you have a few, uh, few explanations. It can be on two, uh, a two-floor level, or on a, a single uh, floor level at, at ground level, uh, depending on the configuration and depending on the land requirement. Uh, here you have uh, a, a, sing, a single stacks of 20 megawatts. You have two times two rows of 25 uh, of those uh, stacks. The approximative size of such a plant would be 250 meters by 60 by 80 and the height would be roughly 15 to 18 meters. We managed to differentiate the ATEX and the non-ATEX zone to be really uh, working in a safe environment. And uh, basically, this type of plant is ready to uh, supply hydrogen at the desired uh, capacity and uh, pressure. To be able to uh, produce such large electrolyzers, you need to be fully equipped. And this way, we have an own workshop installed in uh, Suzhou, uh, China. And we're actually uh, moving workshops. So we're uh, um, moving the old workshop to a new one. It's going to be capable of uh, achieving uh, an electrolyzer production of over 350 megawatts uh, per year, which is as we know, the, uh, the largest uh, uh, workshop capacity. Um, why? Because we've got a growing demand, whether it's a small scale or large scale electrolyzers. Um, we need to be able to uh, manufacture again and again in order to be able to feed our different uh, customers around the world. And uh, this has been thought in order to optimize the production workflow, to optimize the uh, stocks between the different uh, workshop, workshop hubs. And we need to be extremely flexible to be able to go very, very quickly from small scales to large scales. All people that are in the hydrogen business know that it's not so easy, uh, such an easy business, which uh, requires a lot of optimi optimization and uh, a lot of uh, different knowledges, whether it's on the electrolysis, but also on compressors, uh, storage, and distribution. In order to do this, you need to be at the, uh, ahead of the needs of, of your customers to understand what they need and to be able to anticipate um, the uh, needs of the market. Uh, many times needs to uh, come with uh, financial uh, uh, ventures and to be able to uh, provide our people with uh, uh, very specific solutions.
This is the end of my presentation, and I'm available, some colleagues and I, to whatever questions you would have. Is it on? Yeah, now it's on. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience? No? Not for the moment? Okay. So I'm wondering, you showed the gigawatt electrolyzer plant. Um, is this already, like, would you say, when is this, is this already feasible right now? Are you... So this, as it is presented, uh, not yet, because we are... Uh, we are ready to market our 10 megawatt uh, single stack electrolyzer, so we need to double the size. We know what to do, we will do it, but that will be for the next session maybe. Okay, so you expect in the next one, two years? One, two years, yes. To, to get yes, there, exactly, okay. Exactly. Exciting. <laughs> so if you want to know more about the large scale electrolyzers, please go over to their booth at um, E73, E73 um, on this side of the booth. Thank you very much again. You're welcome. Thank you.